Welcome to this week's video. My name is Norman. I'm a reader in marketing at the University of Westminster. On the screen, you can see the old fish markets uh, in Manchester's northern quarter. During the past couple of months, we have spoke to a lot of visitors to uh, Manchester's northern quarter, and this market carries a lot of symbolic mean value, and many participants has many fond or slightly unfound memories of this market. And this week's topic, therefore, is about cultural quarters, symbolic value, and symbolic meanings. We're going to use some of the uh, interview data that we gather to uh, conduct our analysis and to support our arguments. This project is funded by the British Academy and Taiwan's Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, this is the table of content. I'm going to give you an introduction of well, why we're doing this or why I'm doing this and the, uh, the team that's helping me uh, to make this video and to conduct our research. And the main part is probably going to be some of the findings that we gather from our qualitative research. And I'm going to close this uh, presentation with uh, some of the steps that we, we need to do in the next couple of months uh, before we can start our quantitative research. The title of our project is a Comparative Studies on the Consumption Behavior of U the UK's and Taiwan's Cultural Quarter Visitors. Uh, this is a funding scheme funded by the British Academy and Taiwan's Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, it's called the International Partnership and Mobility Scheme. This is uh, my team. Uh, in the center is Professor Hong Guangpong. He's a professor at Ming Chuan University. And then uh, on the left is Professor Annie Chen. She's a professor at the University of West London. And as you know earlier, I'm, my name is Norman. I'm a reader in marketing at the University of Westminster. In the past couple of months, we have been trying to do, we have been doing, conducting in-depth interviews uh, with visitors to uh, Birmingham's Jewelry Quarter, Manchester's Northern Quarter, and Sheffield's Cultural Industry Quarters. Um, there are some emerging themes. I, mean, I think one of the things that I mentioned from our last video is about the halo effect and the summary effect. You know, some of the participants that, that they will think um, the cultural quarter is a representation of the city. And on the other, uh, but for other participants, they will, they will use their experience uh, in the cultural quarter and think, well, that's the experience or that's the impression or the image of the entire city. So it's quite interesting um, to see how they mix the two together. They mix the cultural quarter with the city, um, despite it may or may not be an accurate reflection of what happened. But that was the last video, I think I mentioned it already. So in the next video, in this week's video, we are going to talk about more about what we have found. Um, they include symbolic value and symbolism, uh, congruence and connection, and the memorable activities. Well, symbolic value and symbolism, well, I think for many visitors, I think they, what they, when they go to a cultural quarter, um, they look for uh, some symbols, whether it's the clock tower or whether it's a particular uh, uh, pub or particular cinema or um, particular uh, districts. And they go there and then they look at the building and then they, uh, they, look, they look for symbolic values or the symbolic meaning uh, behind it. For example, uh, these are some of the participants uh, transcripts about symbolism. For example, one of the participants talk about the attachment uh, between Manchester's Northern Quarter and himself, uh, about the history, about uh, the kind of the memory he had when he, he was a, a child and how the district has transform, uh, transformed um, to today's uh, very trendy image, very fashionable image and a, 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 and a very vibrant community. And participant E on this, it is about uh, also it's about the the image and the fact that Manchester is moving forward because of the regeneration, the rede redevelopment of this cultural quarter. So I um, mean, this is uh, definitely something that uh, as researchers we're we're quite uh, we can I cannot say that I it, it's unexpected. I mean I kind of expected, it, but it's very good. Oh, it is also quite interesting to hear from. Uh, the participants talking about it because uh, I might have a general and very vague idea of symbolism of and the cultural quarter symbolism but hearing from the visitors hearing from those who who visit this district uh, on a regular basis uh, or as a tourist it is still quite fascinating 
So the second, the third point is about congruence and connection. I mean, cultural quarters connect people. Uh, it is it, it, that's what it is supposed to do. I mean, for many cultural quarters, it used to be a, a, the center of the town or center of the city, and it became a little bit run down. And the government or the local authorities or the local community try to rebuild it. Therefore, I mean, there's a sense of congruence. There's a sense of connections between participants, between visitors, between tourists, and between uh, and with the the uh, the cultural quarter. For example, uh, again, I, one of the participants to Northern Quarter talk about uh, artistic value about it and talk about how he uh, associate himself with the visitors to cultural quarter. Manchester's quarter, cultural quarter. I mean, he himself is quite artistic, and um, he talk about what well, the, the visitors to Northern Quarter, for example, he used the, uh, the phrase "guardians readers," and that's quite interesting uh, to associate with newspaper readership with a cultural quarter's visitors or typical cultural quarter visitors. And also, uh, another participant talk about how his love for handcraft, handcrafted products. Uh, affected his behavior, affected his decisions to visit Birmingham's jewelry quarter. I mean, in, uh, in Birmingham's jewelry quarter, uh, most of the products are handmade or at least partially handmade, and it's quite unique. You cannot find it uh, elsewhere, so that's quite interesting. You can see the congruence between personality and uh, the cultural quarter. You can see uh, lifestyle with cultural quarters. Um, so that's something that is worth further exploring in, in, the, in the future. And, and the last emerging theme is about memorable activities. Uh, me and to be more precise, memorable cultural activities. Almost all the participants uh, came to the, culture, the cultural quarters f in order to, to participate in some sort of activity whether it's to learn more about jewelry making or whether it's to enjoy the nightlife of Manchester Northern Quarter or uh, to go to the pub or famous cinemas in Sheffield. Uh, memorable activities is a repeatedly uh, thing that participants mentioned uh, about and it is something that uh, the current literature, I mean of course the current literature talk about memorable tourism activities. However, uh, it's in terms of cultural activities, in terms of how this uh, influence cultural quarter visitors. It is not so much. Uh, it hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't been discussed as much as uh, to other parts of the literature. So that's, uh, for example, two of our participants talk about um, designing a ring, designing a, a a ring by herself or by himself, and so it is one of the kind. I mean, it is not a mass-produced product that you can find. In department stores, it is something that belongs to her, belongs to a particular memory, um, so that's quite unique. And then uh, learning how the jewelry is made again for many participants, that's something that they took that took away from Birmingham's Jewelry Museum. So that memorable experience, memorable activity, it is certainly a very key part of the cultural quarter visitation experience. So what can we go from here? I think, I mean, through qualitative research, we get it, we, we found a lot of emergent themes. But is it, maybe after all, I mean, it is a handful of participants. Uh, can these experience, can these uh, experience be generalized to the wider public, uh, wider, wider group of uh, consumers? That's the question that we need to answer. Because, I mean, if it is only uh, uh, an experience of a few participants, then it has less value. So what we want to do next is to well, base to use what we have learned through qualitative research, and then to come up with a quantitative research to to to, st to ex further explore uh, visitors or tourists um, decisions to visit a cultural quarter. And so based on the emergent things I talked about, I think. I think it is quite important that we, we consider the uh, congruence theory because congruence theory talked about how lifestyles, how uh, self-image uh, can influence a person's consumption behavior if the product, whether it's a service or goods or experience, is aligned with or can enhance a person's self-image or, or desired lifestyle. And second is that well, symbolic value and symbolic meaning has been brought up repeatedly. So we need to think about how we can take a cultural quarter's symbolic value into consideration. Um, 
there's this uh, framework called symbolic consumption of tourism destination. That's something that we might uh, consider when trying to formulate our research uh, framework and hypothesis. One thing that we're not so sure about, but we, that we think is quite important, is that how can, can we take uh, these memorable activities, memorable experiences into consideration? How can we incorporate this into our framework uh, when trying to study cultural uh, quarter visitors' uh, overall experience, overall satisfaction? Because that's some uh, memorable, memorable experience, memorable activities uh, have been talked about by participants on a regular basis and apparently it has a huge influence on their future visitation experience as well as uh, in the, their intentions to recommend these quarters uh, to others. So that's something that we need to consider for the next uh, month or uh, a month and a half. So in terms of how do we, and once we have our hypothesis and once we have our um, framework, I think the next step is to think about how, how can we uh, gather our data, for example, the sampling method. At the moment, we are thinking about gathering our data in these cultural quarters, or because I, I think that's the best way to approach participants, and that's the best way to increase the, 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 the number of usable data that we can collect. So it's, I think it's, it's the, the right way to do it. It's efficient and effective. And in terms of selection criteria, I think definitely they have to be a tourist. Uh, whether it's international or domestic, that's something that we still want to think about. It's also we want to think about, uh, I think they should be an adult. Uh, they made a decision to come to this quarter on purpose. It's not, it shouldn't be a business trip. It should be a, a tourism or leisure uh, activity rather than a business activity. So that's something that we, we were considering. And the desired number of participants, well, uh, we, we are thinking about uh, around 400 to 500 usable data because that's the, the data that um, it's probably more suitable for quantitative research and if we want to run uh, SEM or uh, PLS I think that's the, that's uh, the right number so we in the next couple of months we, we need to think about these questions we need to think about how we can conduct our quantitative research in, a, in the most efficient and effective ways and also we want to think about because this is a comparative studies we want to think about well whether this method can be uh, used when we try to study Taiwan's participants uh, who visit Taiwan's uh, cultural quarter so when there are a lot of issues um, that are still ongoing, still being discussed. But I think we are making very good progress. I mean, I think we through this project, we learned a lot about cultural quarters in the UK and in Taiwan and how they shape our communities, how they attract visitors, and how they add new value uh, to some of the old building and some of the old. Um, well, add, according to one participant, it's about adding something new to something old. So that's quite valuable. And hopefully we will be able to update you on what we have done in terms of our quantitative research in our next video. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you again very soon.